What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and I stayed up very late last night testing out every single thing I could about Nintendo Switch's newly introduced online service. And it's now something I understand a lot better, but there's one part of it that's really still confusing nonetheless. So let's talk about what this is on the surface. So first and foremost, this is obviously Nintendo's way of trying to charge people just a small extra fee to get them to just have basic access to the internet. If you want to play something like Splatoon 2 with your friends or do a couple laps in Mario Kart, while this was originally just a free service that was included with the console, it now costs $20 a year. And the thing that they're trying to say is that this is all in an effort to later on create dedicated servers for particular games. What that means is, if you're playing something like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, you want Nintendo to have their own a super server for you to play on to make sure every single punch, kick, and dodge is done flawlessly. In that way, it seems like the service is at least functional. It doesn't seem like anything that was already working is now suddenly much better. I actually did some stuff just testing it out, including a couple rounds of Fortnite, and these were very oddly laggy. I mean, to the point at which I was just skipping all over the place. So it's hard to tell if maybe there's still some sort of big maintenance going on, or if this is just the fact that maybe the epic game servers for Fortnite are getting seriously bogged down. So really what I'm saying about this is that if you're somebody who's swiping your credit card to just continue getting access to the things you already had that were free for the first year and a half, it seems like it's all right. My hope is that Nintendo is putting all this money in a giant bank account so that later on they can actually spend some real cash to try and upgrade these things and maybe give us the absolute best online options. Moving on to the next thing though, here's the part that I find the most interesting personally because I have been begging them to introduce some form of virtual console. Playing old games on new hardware is something I find really, really fun, and I was actually pretty intrigued when they announced that there would be 20 NES games, which are the original 8-bit games that started this company off, fully playable on the Nintendo Switch, but they are only accessible if you have the online service. Think of this as having like Netflix for really old school games. So I went through all of them one by one, and I can say that the catalog is okay. I'm very very thankful that they have one of my favorite NES games ever, Super Mario Bros. 3 on here, but it left me a little bit craving something along the lines of a good RPG or something in here that truly stands out. Instead, what we're getting is just some really old school games that you're probably going to see everywhere else. But there is a nice twist to this, which is two player lobbies. Yes, that's right. You are not forced to play these games alone, but instead, anybody who is on your Nintendo Switch friends list has the ability to play these games co-op, which is pretty radical, but there is a secondary choice. So let's talk co-op first, because I tried a ton of this. What you're seeing here is some nice two-player action of me and my good friend Spawnwave Media. He is an awesome YouTuber and, a little known fact, a beast at most beat-em-ups. So we jumped into River City Ransom to try and take out some random thugs, and we were really, really cutting a rug. We were just demolishing people all around. And it seemed like everything was very, very fluid. Now, obviously, it's not like this game is super demanding, but making sure you're emulating both games simultaneously this fluid fluid is still a little bit difficult, and it didn't seem like there was any lag, there was no hiccups, there was nothing. It was very much the game I remember from the past, but fully and perfectly emulated here. But there's a second part of this that I found really interesting, which is there is an ability called controller passing. So whenever you want, you're able to pause the game and suspend it by pulling both the triggers on the switch simultaneously, and here is where you have a secondary menu for doing things like creating saves states, which are basically like a reserve point that you can jump back to, or by pressing Y, you can hand off the controller, theoretically, over to your friend. It's sort of like, uh, basically like old school co-op. If you got stuck on a boss or you didn't know where to go, you would just physically hand your friend sitting next to you on the couch the controller to see how far they could get. And we decided to try and experiment with this in The Legend of Zelda, the original masterpiece. And it was honestly 
really, really cool to be able to actually hand Spawn Wave this controller, even though we're on opposite sides of America, and just take turns trying to slay these different monsters and have fun. And I really think that it runs exceedingly smooth. But things got a little bit strange when we jumped into uh, Mario 3. Super Mario Bros. 3 has like a microsecond to delay. Now, I played through the whole game by myself first, and everything was completely fine when I was doing things solo. When I was by myself, there did not seem to be any sort of lag or input errors whatsoever. I was able to beat it really fast and fluid. However, when I brought in Spawn Wave, suddenly things changed, and there was like this, what I would call thickness. It felt like there was just a very small microsecond delay to every action I took, and it was very strange because it made it where sometimes when I was just trying to perform basic actions, it did feel a little bit off. It's hard to tell if this was maybe us connecting to each other's consoles, like a peer-to-peer -peer issue, or if somehow Nintendo's console or Nintendo's service is just bogging down. It was very, very strange, and I didn't really care for it. And it makes me a little bit wondering, I bet they're probably still testing a lot of this stuff out. If they start introducing games that require very instantaneous button presses like the Ninja Turtles, you are going to need to be perfectly ready to fight. So I'm hoping they manage to clear up a glitch like this before that comes out. A downside of these NES games does seem to be that they are riddled with glitches. Just small stuff where it seems like they're not fully being able to interact with the console. Just Two examples of the fact that if you play a game that has a very static image on it, it will actually create this fake burn-in on your hold screen. Like when you put the console to sleep, it'll end up leaving these ghostly images there that make it seem like the console is getting burnt when really it's not. And there's also been a lot of reports of people having issues with playing some games where you're trying to do actual shared couch co-op and your Joy-Con's not correctly operating. as if if the console itself doesn't know how to behave if people are not doing online play. Now the last thing that we need to dig into is probably the thing that's the most befuddling and the last thing that they've really been kind of coy about when advertising this online service, which is cloud saves. So if you were somebody who just played like 200 hours of Breath of the Wild and you wanted to put that save state in a safe area, well, it's not exactly great just having it sit there on your console because if it gets dropped, braked, or your dog chews it up instead of your homework, that means that file and all your hard work is irrevocably destroyed. So cloud saves give you an extra option to basically put it up into the ether and if things go bad you're able to just retrieve it. Now it seems like this function definitely works great. I mean it's very simplistic, you just do it in the options menu, nothing too out of place. Except for one thing, one of the few games that they mentioned specifically would not be compatible with cloud saves was Dead Cells. And yet, here it is in my menu and I can put it in the cloud. Does that mean that this isn't really happening? Does it mean I can't retrieve it later? I'm not really sure. I mean, Nintendo's messaging wasn't exactly super transparent, but now I guess I'm just curious what happens next. I paid the $20 for the entire year of online because I review a lot of games. I need to be able to access the internet for all my different gaming needs. But I guess I'm really just waiting to see what else they introduce. This is fine, but I'm definitely glad that it's dirt cheap. Personally though, I would be fully willing to pay double or triple the price, like $40 a year or $60 a year, to have access to more functions. I would really love a lot of Super Nintendo games or Nintendo 64 games on my Switch to play anywhere, and then also just be able to play online co-op. It'd be really cool to play like Goldeneye on my Nintendo Switch, and maybe even have like movement functions. That'd be so rad, but for what it is now, it's okay. It's it's definitely not bad, and I mean, I don't think it's fantastic, but at least it's not a ripoff. So thanks very much for watching. These are just my off-the-cuff 3 a.m. thoughts. I'm going to set this to upload in the morning, and then when I wake up, um, I'll read all your nice comments and then probably play a lot more NES games. Nintendo, if you happen to be watching this, and I know you guys sometimes do, put some Final Fantasies on there. Seriously, that is my biggest wish. 
Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do it the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Oh, hey. I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm going to come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.